guys, so I'm pretty much here. I'm in school. This is the cart that we take into the lab to study. So I'm just transferring it over there because uh, my anatomy teacher had it in her room. So I'm gonna bring it over to the lab. up you guys I know you guys wanted an update on pretty much what and how I study this semester I am taking maxillofacial anatomy of the head and neck and as a dental hygiene student that is very very crucial to know you're doing oral examinations intraoral examinations so you need to know pretty much like the landmarks of the mouth the head the campus has a back cavern it's called it's pretty much like a science lab where you have, for example, here are the models of the teeth. You have this model of the skull. You have multiple model models. Uh, you have the mandible. You have another model of the skull. So just multiple models, and it's pretty much on this cart. So this cart is the dental hygiene cart. And yeah, I have a nice big window, but it leads out to the parking lot. Pretty much it's a big cart. It's usually kept in the dental hygiene, like the bio building, but one of the students have to move it up to the science building. So it's pretty much uh, you study this cart when you're given a topic on landmarks of the head and neck, so on and so forth. So you guys ask, what am I studying right now? That's what I'm focusing on right now. Oral anatomy, bones of the head and neck, and yeah. so. I'm pretty much just kind of vlogging this because I can't, you know, I'm learning. It's a learning experience, so I don't want to put like false information, but you'll kind of see pretty much how I study. I live really, really far, so when I am on cam campus, I try to take advantage as much as I can to come in here and physically touch the models because when you're physically touching the models, you can really, really grasp and understand the material, uh, especially just the models because there's so many bones so many muscles so many nerves and veins and all that stuff so it's just good to come in physically touch them and have an idea and understand and grasp the material <laughs> I don't even think you can eat at, in here but I'm hungry Sorry, the lighting sucks in here. It really, really does. I'm not at home. Um, but I'm pretty much right now, as I mentioned, settled down. I ate um, and I'm ready to hit the books. I have the objectives. So my professor would give me like objectives. So she would separate temporal bone here and then what I need to know that's in the temporal bone. Mandible, for example, and then what I need to know uh, that's on the mandible and then moving along maxilla what I need to know from the maxilla sphenoid so everything is pretty much sorry I'm in vlogging mode but everything is pretty much organized separated for you to understand and you just have to know it pretty much with anatomy you just have to memorize it know it um, I went ahead and picked up one of these um, or ask my teacher for one of these because they're just helpful. They're skinny, long, and you can just point to the objects um, as you're going through it. Just point, 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 point. So that's helpful. You're touching everything in here and pretty much getting to know the skull. I don't study for like eight hours straight uh, just because I have a long drive home, but it is now four o'clock. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I will study four hours. So, and I stay here all night because they close at eight. So it really just depends. So I'm gonna start with the temporal bone. And temporal bone has an articular eminence. Articular eminence, we have two models. Articular eminence could be found here. So here's my articular fossa. And the articular eminence would be here. 
articular fossa, articular eminence. Articular fossa is here. Articular fossa, articular eminence. Articular fossa, articular eminence. That's how I memorize things. I just repeat it, point to it, touch it. That's how you're gonna memorize these things. What's always good is just have your textbook with you in front of you, have as many resources, as you possibly can so you can be able to okay i think i know this i think i remember this and then you just go back into your textbook and say all right i know this <laughs> zygomatic bone and then you have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone this book that i'm using is illustrated anatomy of the head and neck so it looks like this this is one of the books for dental hygiene and maxillofacial anatomy or if you're just right taking max maxillofacial anatomy so i'm just referring back to my textbook and making sure that i'm memorizing it getting it repeating it zygomatic bone is here zygomatic process of the temporal bone is here Moving on, we have a mastoid process in the temporal bone. I know in the exam we have to know like where these processes are, whether it's in the temporal bone, the frontal bone, occipital bone, we just have to know which bone it is uh, correlated with or connected to, attached to. Mastoid process and styloid process is going to be in the temporal bone and we're just going to do a review. We have the articular fossa here and we have the articular eminence here then this pointy sharp is called the styloid process okay and right above the styloid process we have our mastoid process which is here i i remember it just because um in spanish masticar is chewing so mastoid i'm thinking of masticar in spanish so mastoid process is here and styloid process is here this is the model that i'm going to use for the mandible we have the condyloid process the coronoid process okay then we have the mandibular notch which is here okay mandibular notch and we have the ramus of the mandible is pretty much this part. So the vertical part, so where my pointer is over is the mandibular ramus. So this part is the mandibular ramus um, or ramus of the mandible. Then we have the angle of the mandible. So the angle of the mandible is pretty much this here. So the angle, where the mandible kind of angles is the angle of the mandible. So I'm just gonna point here, um, the angle of the mandible. Have your textbook with you so you can refer back. Um, it's pointing to pretty much these two where my index fingers are, angle of the mandible. I have the body of the mandible, so the body of the mandible is pretty much the whole bottom of the mandible okay this is the body this is the body of the mandible so like i'm holding it body mandible behind the third molar so the retro retro molar triangle would be right over here in this area okay retro molar tri retro molar triangle this is the coronoid notch so not the retromolar triangle, not there. This is the retromolar triangle. The coronary notch is here. This is the coronary notch. Okay? Please refer to your textbook. Always have your textbook with you. It's important. The mylohyoid line um, or the internal oblique line is right over here and you will see it pretty much mylohyoid line is this line right over here and whatever you have on one side you will have on the other so it's here this line and the lighting in here stinks but it's what i've got the external oblique line which is pretty much 
think of it um, in a dotted line kind of form. It's pretty much the outline of the mandible. Dotting it, dot it in your mind, or think of my pointer as just a marker dotting lines here. That is the external oblique line, okay? So just pretty much the lining of the mandible. Um, exteriorly, externally, outside. <laughs> so external oblique line and mylohyoid lines are inside, okay? Good. Then we have the submandibular and the sublingual fossa, which you will find inside. So the sublingual fossa would be up here. So more towards where the tongue is, like the tip of the tongue is. So up here, sublingual, and then submandibular would be underneath the mylohyoid line. So submandibular here, okay? This is the submandibular and the sublingual, okay? And in between is the mylohyoid line. Digastric fossa and the genile tubercles. So the digastric fossa is down under here. So these little dots here is a digastric fossa. And then you have also little dots here, which is the genile tubercles. My pointer is, that's the symphysis right here, symphysis. So that was the mandible. Maxillary tuberosity is pretty much this part right here. So this part, right over here, where my pointer is, is the maxillary tuberosity. We went over temporal bone, mandibular bone, and we're moving on to the maxilla or the maxillary bone. It's pretty much the, the top part of your mouth. Um, so maxillary bone is this part. So we have the mandible. Whoa, nope. The maxillary. Maxillary tuberosity is right over here. So here you have your um, canine. Right over here, you have your central, lateral, canine, and the canine eminence is right over here. Okay, the time process is pretty much this area here, the, the top of the maxilla. Okay, inside, this is the palatine process. The orange is the horizontal plate. From here to here is the horizontal plate. That's the median palatine suture. This line here is the transverse palatine suture. So where my pointer is, that's the transverse palatine suture. So you have the median palatine suture, which is dividing the palatine bone in the middle. Then you have your transverse uh, palatine suture. So you have the anterior, anterior nasal spine right here. And then you have the posterior nasal spine right over here, okay? We're gonna move on to the sphenoid. Our sphenoid on the skull um, is pretty much this part. So it's this, it's this thingy here in here. That's pretty much what it is. Um, actually, it's this way. This is like a little butterfly, so this is like the face of the butterfly and the wings and all that stuff. So the pterygoid process, these are the processes. These are the pterygoid processes. There's one and two, okay? Me. Median um, pterygoid plate. Then you have the lateral pterygoid plate, which is facing outwards. So lateral ter pterygoid plate and the medi medial pterygoid plate pterygoid plate, I can't even pronounce it. Lateral pterygoid plate is here and the medial pterygoid plate. Then you have the pterygoid hamilus, which is these pointy thingies at the end. Pterygoid hamilus, pterygoid fossas are here inside, pterygoid fossas. Okay, good. Infratemporal crust, this right here like a little crest that is the infratemporal crest right here hey we got the sphenoid bone done now moving on to the ethmoid bone the superior nasal concha 
and the middle nasal concha. Up here is the Crystagalli cribriform plate is here. See the cribriform plate here. So this is the cribriform plate right over here. And then this little ball is the Crystagalli right over here. This is your ethmoid bone and your sphenoid bone. So you have your inferior nasal concha, your middle nasal concha, and your superior nasal concha. And we know that we have the meatuses in between your conchas, okay? So you would have the superior, you would have the superior meatus, middle meatus, and the inferior meatus, labella. So the labella is actually right in the middle of your forehead. It's like a little protuberance in the middle of your forehead, which would be like right here. So the glabella and the glabella is in the for on the forehead and the occipital protuberance would be here in the back. So we have foramens, um, canals in our bones where our veins and you know our blood vessels flow. On the mandible, you have the mental foramen. So the mental foramen, you are going to find right over here. Mental means chin. So the mental foramen is right over here and you have one on the other side as well. Mental foramen. For reference, please refer to your textbook so you follow along and understand everything. So mandibular foramen is here and the mental foramen is here on the chin. Moving on, you have the mandibular canal. So the mandibular canal would be on the outside part of the mandible. It doesn't have a hole, but this is the mandibular canal. It's going out through the mental foramen. So the mandibular canal would be here. So where your incisors are would be your incisive canal. You have nerves going up to your incisors right here in this part of your chin. So you have all these nerves running through the mandible and then they just go up to the incisive canal here. So that's your incisive canal. Lingual foramen is found right above the genile tubercles, so it would be like right here. Um, I don't know if my professor is going to label it because it's just hard to tell in the models where the lingual foramen is, but it should be like up in this area, the lingual foramen. So moving on, those are your canals and foramens for the mandible. We are moving on to the maxilla. And we have the infraorbital, yes, infraorbital foramen, which you will find right over here, infraorbital foramen. You'll find one here and you'll find one here. Lighting sucks so bad. So the posterior superior um, alveolar foramina is in this area um, here. We are up to the incisive foramen. So incisive foramen and incisive canal are very, very similar. So incisive foramen is up here on the palate. Uh, on the palatine bone or the maxilla. So we're gonna use, we're going to name this as the nasal palatine foramen um, instead of the incisive foramen, just because on the mandible, we have the incisive canal, okay? Which, sorry, which is here. In so here we have the lesser foramen and the greater foramen, lesser foramen, and the greater foramen. So those little holes are the foramens of the palatine. Lesser palatine foramen, greater palatine foramen. This you can get easily confused just because there are a bunch of little holes, but just know that it's not inside here. Like it's not here, it's closer. It's closer to the oval oval foramen, so ro rodinum foramen, rodundum foramen, oval foramen, and the spinosum foramen, okay? Foramen, spinosum, foramen, redundum, and foramen oval. So in the temporal bone, all we need to know is the external auditory meatus, which is the external part of the ear. So 
it would be here, the external auditory, auditory meatus. Okay, please excuse the shadowing and the lighting. I'm really trying to get through this video. It just, it keeps, it's dark. It's really, really dark. And I've been here all afternoon. So bear with me with the lighting. So it is, it is super duper late. I've been in school since for like maybe, what time is it? It's like maybe six hours I've been in school. Um, no, actually I think more. Yeah, six hours. <laughs> six and a half hours to be exact um so it's pretty much it's a nice evening um in the beginning in the beginning of this vlog it was sunny out but this is what i do i just study with my cart um the lighting in here sucks I i'm pretty much done like studying what you guys saw was pretty much just all the bones that we had to know and recognize for our lab practical so a lot of my classmates study together um, in groups. I just live far, so I just have to come when I can. Um, but again, invest in the Color Atlas coloring book. I'm waiting for it um, from Amazon. I think it's like 30 something bucks. And I'm gonna try it out. I'm very visual for visual learners. Coloring, color coding helps. It just helps me memorizing, touching things. It just helps understand, know it, and memorize it and get it. As far as the competency exam, I will make a video and um, let you guys know how I prepared for the competency exam. And for you know, for those who are interested in dental hygiene and just you know anxious or about to take the exam, just let you guys know how I prepared and how I studied. Um, so yeah, I'm all done for the most part for today with anatomy. I'm gonna go home and read some. Dental, dental Hygiene Wilkins um, for my POHS 1 uh, class because I, I need to catch up. It's just a matter of like catching up and making sure you're putting efficient timing in your studies. So yeah, I had to get on that and I'm on it. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these kind of videos, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, let me know what you guys wanna see. And yeah, study, good luck with everything, and I will see you in my next video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, and I will speak to you guys soon. Bye.